Chavre, was macht ihr? How is everyone? I hope everyone is gesund, stark und freilich. Begash mich zu Beruchnis. How are you? I hope everyone is healthy, strong and happy physically and spiritually. Today is Erev Shabbos Kodesh, Pashas, Nitzom, Vayelech. Excuse me, it's Erev Shabbos Kodesh, Shabbos Slichis. So we're standing within a week of Rosh Hashanah. And as usual, we have to understand the connection between Rosh Hashanah and this Shabbos, Pashat Nitzvah Vayelech, and what's the message that's relevant to our lives right now. And as usual, I would like to demonstrate how Chassidus illuminates every single aspect of Torah and takes it to the next level completely. And what we'll see today in Mir Hashem is there's a Hayyim Yoyim which says, Chassidus is Azam Min Get Lecha Wissenschaft. Chassidus is such a godly um, knowledge. Was by Weist, wie niedrig der Mensch is, und wie hoich er kennt sich der Griechen. How lowly man is, and how high he could reach. I don't know if I mentioned it, I'm right now in the Rebbe Shechunah Baruch Hashem, Zuchisi, to come to the Rebbe for Rosh Hashanah, I'm in the Rebbe Shechuna, and I wish everyone to have this chus to be part of a large Jewish community together. The more you're together with others, the greater the blessings. So this is the idea to show the paradox, how on one hand you should be honest and true to who you are and where you're holding, and on the other hand to realize always the redemptive angle there's no limits to how high you could reach. Since the war started, we gave Stucker, so we're adding Stucker right now. We're going to start with a prayer after the Stucker. And this is Kapitel Chavzayin that we're all staying these days. And the first Pasuk of Kapitel Chavzayin. I'm sure we probably mentioned this before. Is Ladovi Dadinoi Oidi Vishi Mimi Iro Adinoi Mois Chayai Mimi Evchod? Hashem is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Hashem is the stronghold of my life. From who shall I be frightened? So the word is, and the Rebbe explains in many places, we start off with the Dovid Hashem Oidi. First, you have to see the light, you have to have clarity. There's two levels. There's one level where sometimes you don't know the distinction between right and wrong and what's good and evil. Then there's another problem. Even after you know what's the right thing to do, sometimes you don't always have the strength to carry it through. But first you have to be able to distinguish distinguish between right and wrong. So this is the request. The first thing is that we should, we should see and understand, have the clarity to know what's right and what's wrong. That's the first request. Once we have the David Hashem Oidi, then there could be the Yishi, then Hashem could help. And then you ask for the help to be able to carry through that once you know what's right and what's wrong, to do the right thing and not to do the wrong thing. So the Posik we'll focus on today, which is a very famous Posik. And last Shabbos was Chayel, which the Yemen led us to the Baal Shem Tov. So we'll hazard a Torah from the Baal Shem Tov on a Pasuk in Pasha's Vayelich. Now, first of all, since this is the last Shabbos of the year, so we could say, in general, as the Sachakel, the Sachakel, the conclusion, the sum total of Tov Shem Pei Dalid, comes down to this Shabbos. So this is the time we have to make a reckoning. So it's a very important Shabbos where we have to make a reckoning of the sum total of what happened in the previous year and to prepare ourselves for the next year. So it's very similar to what we're reading about in the Parshas, Mitzvah Vayelech, HaMoshe Rabbeinu, is passing on and he hands over the responsibility, so to speak, to Yeshua as a leader and he speaks about the future 
So the Pasuk is talking about, first of all, there's a message of empowerment. Twice the Pasuk says over here about Chazak ve'ematz, to be strong. Chizku v'yimtzu, be strong and courageous. And then he repeats it again when he speaks to Yeshua, Chazak ve'ematz, be strong and courageous. So that's a message of empowerment. My friend, you're going to face a future, and the future might include a bumpy road, a rough ride. So be strong and courageous. Chazak ve'emotz. So that's what Moshe tells the Yidin, and he tells Yeshua, and he tells of the times where the Yidin are not going to be doing the right thing, and thinking about the past year, and we're not giving Hashem any excuses, but the reality is that you could say that it says in the Pesach, V'chora api boi b'yei mahu, and it says, V'azavtim v'histarti pone mehem, Hashem says, I will conceal myself. U'metzu'u rois rabois, v'tzorois. There will be many troubles. And then the Pesach says, V'onoichi hastir astir ponai b'yoyim hahu. Hashem says, I will conceal my face in that day. That's what the Pasuk says. That's Pasuk Yud Ches, Kapitol Lamed Aleph. I will surely hide my face on that day. I will surely hide my face that day because of whatever. Okay. So here there's a famous, famous Torah of the Baal Shem Tev. And we're going to speak uh, first the Torah of the Baal Shem Tev, which on the one hand shows how Chassidus reveals the lowliness of man, that a person has to be aware of his true condition, and then we'll show how Chassidus takes it to the next level completely. So first of all, the Baal Shem Tev said, on this verse, that Hanukhi, Hastir, Astir, double concealment. What does it mean, a double concealment? A double concealment means that you're not even aware that you're in the darkness. That's how bad the concealment is. There's one level of concealment that there's darkness. Then there's another level of concealment that the person's not even aware that he's in darkness. And he thinks that the darkness is light. And in a certain sense, by the way, you can say, many people have this discussion about our days and our times, and you could say that the world in general, if we look in history, we're making progress. Life is much more easier, there's, there's rules, there's human rights, there's crimes against humanity, there's no more slaves, and all these things is, is progress. That's true. But on the other hand, and now's not the time to elaborate on the negative, the problem is that as we see the situation right now, where Israel is fighting terrorists, and we are considered by the majority of the world as the bad guys. So in a way, in that way, it's worse than ever before. Because in the past, at least, what was black was black, and what was white was white. But today we have a situation that the world looks at white and calls it black, and the world looks at black and calls it white. And in that level of, of mistake never existed before, to such a degree as it is right now. So that's the pshat, v'anichi hastir astir. It's a double concealment. They don't even realize what the situation is. And in Avodah Hashem, this is the main thing which prevents a person from improvement in general, is his own bias. Chassidus talks very much about the idea of avas atzmoi mechas al pshoyim. Because a person has an agenda, and he has a bias, so therefore he doesn't see the truth about himself. What can we say? That's why, like we recently had in Ayim Yayim, there was his nidrik in grob, that had the egin in nidrikait in grob kreit. A person usually cannot see the truth about himself because he has a bias. 
Someone who is low does not see the truth about himself, how low he is. He needs a friend. He needs a mentor. You need a third party, an outside party, to be objective, to be able to see the truth. And this is the first step of salvation, of healing, of growth, of improvement. You need to get a correct diagnosis, and with the correct diagnosis, then you can move forward. That's the way it is. And to be able to receive a correct diagnosis, if you're a mature person, you appreciate it, you love it. I think we've spoken about this many times. Anybody who has any dealings with with tests and medical tests, and just recently before I came to the Rebbe, I had a couple of tests for whatever reason. In any case, every time you take a test, it's because there's a reason you're taking a test. Something's wrong, something's bothering you, the doctor's ordered the test. And then you're worried what's going to be the results of the test. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, all results should be positive. But the point is, you got to get to the bottom of it. Why do the doctors order tests? Because they all say the same thing. Without getting to the bottom of it, to know precisely what's wrong, we can't really help. And the same thing is true in Avodah Hashem. Every single one of us, and I'm talking to myself, has to look deep inside himself, never to fool himself. One should never fool themselves and think they're finished. I once heard a good saying, once you think you're finished, you're finished. (laughs) So you have to be able to look at yourself, self-examination with honesty, and then realize where there's room for improvement and work on it. I just heard, just recently, I heard from my brother, Abzusha Winner, a marshal that I never heard before in the name of the world-famous Mashpia, Reb Yael, from my Mashpia, and my brother's Mashpia, my brother's 10 years older, and he just told me a new word that I never heard before. And it goes together with this idea how, you know, the person who fools himself, no matter what evidence he's presented with, he keeps on continuing to fool himself. This is what it means. It's a double concealment. One shot is the people are ignorant and they go in darkness. In other words, they're, they're doing the wrong thing. But a deeper shot is they don't even realize that they're going in the darkness and they continue going in the darkness. So the marshal that my brother once heard from Rabbi Yale was about, in the olden days, when they would have a shtotz meshugene. Today it's not politically correct to call anybody meshugene, but I'm sure everyone understands the Yiddish language. This was, everyone knows what a meshugene is. So, in those days, you know, there would usually be one meshugene to a, to a city, and there were they couldn't afford to, to, to build an asylum or an institution that would house these Meshuggah. So there was a city that not only they had one Meshuggah, they had two Meshuggah. Now, what do they do to the Meshuggah? They would tie the Meshuggah to, to a tree. Because if it was a mild Meshuggah, so no problem, we could have, you know, the local Meshuggah. Not a problem. People understood the guy's Meshuggah. But sometimes the Meshuggah was violent. Sometimes the Meshuggah was out of control. Sometimes the Meshuggah would cause all sorts of havoc, embarrass people, do damages. So they would have to take the Meshuggah. They would have to take the Meshuggah and, and tie him to a big, to a tree. So he would just be there, but not cause any harm. Anyways, there was one town, one city, where there were two Meshuggah, and they were tied to a tree at the center main street of this town, and they're both tied to this tree, and they're sitting over there, standing over there, and they're discussing, and they're they're getting involved with their favorite activity. What's their favorite activity? observing all the passers-by of the town and making the observation. So they're observing everybody and they're looking at, the, first goes the town's mayor 
and one says to the other, Meshugane, oh, and as I'm Meshugane, he's power hungry, he makes all stupid decisions, ah, Zam Meshugane. Then the Rav goes by, the rabbi, to the Meshugane, says to the other Meshugane, ah, oh, Zam Meshugane, he wants covet, he likes honor, he, he doesn't know how to treat people properly, no one likes him, he should leave this town, go to another town, where maybe he'd be more appreciated, ah, Meshugane. Then, you name it. The cobbler walks by, the plumber walks by, the electrician walks by. <laughs> so one Meshuggah tells the other Meshuggah <coughs> about every single person that walks by, every passerby from the entire, from the entire community is a Meshuggah. Okay, after they finish observing all the passerbys and they pass the verdict, the final verdict, each one's a Meshuggah. Finally, the other Meshuggah tells his friend, but, but, but okay, we came to the conclusion that everyone's a Meshuggah. The Gantz is Meshuggah. And us two are the only sane people left. But Chaba Kasha, I have a question. Please explain it to me. As Mirza and the Namalev, we're the normal ones. When the Gantz Ashtot is in the and everyone else is crazy, Favazan and Mir Tzugibun the to the bane, how come we're the ones that are tied to the tree and not everyone else? So this friend answers him, It's a good question, but I have a simple explanation. And the explanation is, There's not enough rope to tie up all the people, everyone else. So they decided to turn the tables. They, they tied us up. That's what he answered his friend. So in other words, and then he says, and those goofers that I is in Meshugayim, that they decided to tie up the two same people, me and you, because there's not enough rope to really tie up the rest of the world, so we are the ones that get tied up. So you see what it means that the person is living a lie. He's living a mistake. He's misguided misinformed, and then based on this misinformed and misguided, he goes deeper and deeper down the hole, into the darkness, into the mud. And this is what we have to ask from the Ebishter, L'dovid Hashem Oiri, enlighten me. It shouldn't be a matzav of a nechi has to ask there, that I shouldn't be aware of whatever flaws or limitations that I have, because if I'm not aware of it, I'll never improve. So that's the first that's the Torah of the Baal Shem Tev, and that's the first thing we learn from this Pasuk, and which is a message for us at the end of the year. Let's look deep inside ourselves to be able to correct it so that next year should be better than this year in our growth, which is the whole purpose of our life, is to constantly go Mikhail Ochoel in Avedis Hashem. What's the second shot? Apich Sidis. So we'll understand it based on the famous Gemara in Megillah, where the Gemara says, Esther minatoiro minayin. Listen to this. The name Esther, Queen Esther, in the story of the Megillah. Where did we learn out that name from? From this very Pasuk. What's the profundity of these words? So the Rebbe explains in the Sicha and Chelik Vav on Purim that with this Gemara we see the whole paradox, the whole profundity of what Purim is all about and it lies in these words itself that the Pesach says V'anoichi haste haste I what is in the concealment? Anoichi Misha Anoichi Atzmus Amoros The very highest, highest, highest level of Hashem is not that very darkness. But when you realize what's the purpose, what's the objective of the darkness, and that even in the darkness there's this angle, this aspect of redemption, and you connect with that, and you get in touch with that, and you access that, then you reveal the whole point of the Hasta Aster. And then it's not a concealment in the end, 
But on the contrast, on, on the contrary, the darkness itself illuminates. So what does it mean? And this is the idea, one second, and this is the idea of the Gemara, to teach us that this is the concept of Purim, as we all know, that the whole idea of the Nes Purim is that it was a miracle that wasn't clothed in nature. Number one. Number two, that Hashem's name is not written in the Megillah. So again, Alpinigla, when we say Varnechi Hastar Aster, that shows in a lowliness. That at such a level, the Megillah, Megillah Sester is a lower level <coughs> than the other Swaram, <coughs> and therefore Hashem's name is not written. According to Chsidis, on the contrary, now's not the time to get into it. I'm sure we spoke about it many other times. We're dealing with the level of a Sahecha from Giluim. We're not dealing with levels of light. We're dealing with the essence of Hashem, Hashem alone. Anoichi Misha Anoichi. Just like we see in the Pasuk, Anoichi Hashem Alikecha. There's the word, I am the Lord, your God. And we say Anoichi is higher than Hashem Avaya. Anoichi Havaya Alikecha. Anoichi is higher than Avaya Alikecha, higher than the names of Hashem. The names are a label. The names are a revelation. The names are a level. But it's not the essence of Hashem. Anoichi is the essence. This is what it means over here. Vanoichi haster haster. You should realize that in the hell and the haster is the essence of Hashem Himself, the highest level. And this is the story of Purim. There's an aspect of Purim that's higher than any of the other Yomim Tevim. It says all the Yom Tevim will be in this battle, but Purim not. There's an aspect of Hashem's true ultimate infinity which is revealed in the story of Purim. And the Rebbe explains in the Sikha over there that in the words Megillas Esther, we see this paradox. The word Megillah also is connected to the word Gilui. So what does the word Megillas Esther mean? Megillas, the revelation coming to the ultimate heights, Oymik Roim, the highest, highest level, Megillas Esther, which is the Oymik Tachas, from the worst situation, which is the lowest of the low, and the ultimate darkness, becomes transformed, and we see that in that darkness was the essence of Hashem Himself. That's the message of Purim, that's the message of the words Megillas Esther, and that's the message of the Posik, Vanoichi Hasta Aster. For example, the situation that we're in now. If we make a sachak al tafshim pei dalid, was a terrible situation. It's almost a year. Hashem yirachem, mamish haster aster. Never in the history of since Israel was founded, Eretz Yisrael, have we been in such a matzav. Hashem yirachem, not only because of what happened on October seventh. Hashem Yirachim Loyalenu, that we was 1,200 Kabonis. That's one level of Haster. But Anechi Haster, Haster, the Haster situation, every single day since then, this entire year, and right this second, we're in a matzah of Hashem Yirachim, Ona Adino Yishino, Ona Adino Yatslichano, save the hostages right now. Mashiach should come right now. So we're in a situation where for the entire year there's been this situation of Anichi Hastar Hastar that never was before. And this is what the situation is now. But there's an element where at the same time that we're crying out about this, we're also realizing that there's going to be miracles any second now. Oh, main king he Miracles that there were never were before. Because there was never such a descent. You read the Tzedek Aliyah, there's going to be the greatest, greatest miracles coming. And it starts with each and every single one of us turning to Hashem Himself and realize that there's the Anoichi in the Hasta Hasta. And telling Hashem, it's enough of the Hasta Hasta. We're crying out to you, please reveal yourself with the greatest, 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 greatest miracles in Giluyim. Amen, Bias HaMashiach Mamish. 
And we have to remember every single time in our memory, the Six Day War, the Yom Kippur War, whenever there was a matziv of danger in the end, afterwards the Rebbe said that there were greater, greater miracles and these were the greatest miracles. So this is what we're waiting for right now. But on Avodah Hashem, what does it mean? We have to turn to Hashem. Tata, we're turning to you directly. Because we're going for Anoichi, not levels. When you turn to the Ebishter with the essence of your heart, as we spoke many times, heart to heart, when you cry out, Tata, Tata, Abba, Abba, Hatzileini, so that draws forth also the essence of Hashem. We tell Hashem, we know it's all you, but please make the transformation now in a revealed way. And this is the connection to Slichus. We once spoke about this before. We say, L'cho Hashem Hatzdoko V'lo Endo Abayish Hatzpanim L'cho Hashem Hatzdoko The Rebbe explains L'kutei Slichus Chelik Beis Pashin Nitzov that L'cho Hashem Hatzdoko means returning to you alone. I want you alone. Im Chalei Chafasti Yichvil Dichalei I want you alone. We don't want to deal with bureaucracy. We don't want to deal with red tape. We don't want to deal with any officers. We don't want to deal with any people that are management. We want Atmos Hashem Himself. That's what it means. Hashem And it's also the Pasuk, Ki Imcha Aslicha, with you alone, is forgiveness. And there's a story that went around just recently, a beautiful, beautiful story that just went around this week. I'm going to repeat it that in the time of, right before the outbreak of World War II, there was a, uh, England made something which was called a, a kinder transport. They tried to save as many Jewish children as they could, and 10,000 Jewish children were brought to England, the United Kingdom from the surrounding countries. These 10,000 children, Jewish children, were put into foster homes and schools, and farms. One such child by the name of Beryl Garter told this story many years after World War II, that he was a child, one of the kids from the kinder transport, and uh, he was in one of these schools, and he was told that King George was going to visit their, their town, their city, and they were given strict instructions, they have to be dressed in the best, and be at the best behavior, etc. Anyways, so came the day after they prepared themselves, and the barricades, and the procession, and it's royal, and it's respect, everything connected to a royal visit from the king. Anyways, as the, the royal coach is appearing, and the entourage and convoy is coming along, Beryl just started took a step back, made a giant leap. He jumped over the barrier and started chasing after the main car of the king himself. And he started banging on the window of the car of the king. Anyways, immediately there were security guards around and they pulled him off the, off the car. The car stopped. The doors of the car opened and Beryl found himself face to face with the king. And the king said, I see you want to say hello. Beryl looked at the king face to face. He couldn't speak and he just burst into tears and started crying. So the king said, don't cry now. We're not going to punish you. And Beryl says, your majesty, please forgive me for banging on your door. But I beg you, please help me. You're the only one that could help me. And the king says, how can I help you? And the king says, your majesty, I am a Jew from Germany. I was brought here in the kindersport. But my parents are still in Germany. And I'm so frightened about what might happen to them. And that I may never see them again. And he was crying, sobbing uncontrollably. Uncontro the king said, 
please write down, he told his people around him, take down the name of the parents and what, where they live, the address he asked the, the child. And after he took the information, the king looked at the child and he smiled at him and gave him a pat on the head. And he said, let's see what we can do. Anyways, a couple of weeks passed. Beryl thought, who knows, he might be in big trouble. He's waiting to find out how he's going to be punished. Meanwhile, he a couple of weeks later, he gets called by the headmaster, the principal, to his office. This time he thought for sure he's going to get it. He's in major trouble. Anyways, he comes to the office and the principal tells him, you know what? You made quite an impression on the king. In fact, he sent you a gift. The headmaster opened the side door of his office and standing right there were Beryl's parents. What's the lesson of this story? Chidushelel is melech basada. We are turning to the king himself. You alone. We're going to the top. When we turn to the king himself, the king is smiling and waiting for us to just show up and pour forth, show our love, love and admiration to the king. And then the king responds reciprocally to us and takes care of all our requests. It should be Tehei Shnas, Tovshin Peihei, Tehei Shnas, Pidyan Ashvuyim. There should be a redemption of all the captives, physically in Eretz Yisrael. Pidyan Shvuyim is the greatest mitzvah. Hashem should be Mekayim, the greatest mitzvah. Every single one of us is a Shvuyim in a certain sense, because we're still in exile. And also every single one of us is a certain level of shvuyim because of our nefesh Bahamas. And this is the request from the Abish to Tehei Shnas Pidyin Hashvuyim right now. And the main thing is we should remember both sides of this paradox, Megillas Esther. The idea that on one hand, there's a concept of we can be in a darkness and we're not aware of it. And we should be aware of it and look always to grow and improve. But at the same time, we should realize that our geshaft, our business is only with Van Neuchi, with the Abish himself, and therefore we we'll guarantee that everything will work out. We just have to make the good resolutions. And as the Rebbe said many times, just from making the, revolution, the resolutions, it changes the reality. Good Shabbos, good Shabbos. Hashem should fulfill, fulfill all, our, all our requests. This month of Shabbos, Lecho Hashem Atzdaka, and everyone should be blessed, B'toi Vanile Vanigla, in all areas of the life. Posting from the Rebbe Shechuna, Be'ezes Hashem Izbarech, your man in the Shechuna, Kol Tov, Good Shabbos.